If you're Canada right now, you've got to be thinking, OK, what have we got here? What have we got to do next? And that's not an easy question to answer when you're playing a team like China, let's be honest. They're very experienced. They're so technically correct. They move astoundingly well. And Canada, to their credit, they have a lot of skill on their team. They're a relatively young team, but they have some real cannons. Number 11, Heidi Peters, is the all-time highest scorer of this tournament so far. She has 75 points to her name already. China obviously had a hugely successful tournament so far. They haven't dropped a set. They've been consistent, dominant, every match they've played. And they'll be coming into this match looking to get all their ducks in a row, ready for the final. Ladies and gentlemen, let's be the referees for this match. The first referee from Brazil is Vanessa Hedez. <laughs> Vanessa Hedez is the first referee from Brazil. Our second referee from Japan, Yamamich Rizuto. And Yamamich Rizuto, the second referee. Well, no, if they've had a good game, we won't notice them. All our focus will be on the players. And now, let's meet the team from Canada. Number two, Julie Kozan. Canada coming out onto court first. Be number two, Julie Kozan. She'll be starting at position five. Number three, the captain, Daniela Ellis, starts at position two. Jennifer Oakes, number four. She starts at position one in the back row. Heidi Peters, number 11, is in the front row at position four. Caitlin Wright, number 14, starts at three. And number 15, Felicia Boss Shafiq, is starting at six. Two Libros to choose from. And it's going to be number eight. Joanne Wong, who will uh, start as the Libro. Now let's meet the team from China. Number one, Tong Zhu Ime. Number two, Liu Hong Chen. Time for China, starting with uh, Tang Shumei, number one, middle blocking, and she'll be starting at position two. Liu Hong Chin, number two, starts at three. Wang Yanan, number seven, starts at six in the back row. The captain, Zhu Yi Xiao, number 10, starts in the front row at four. Zhang Li Jun, number 11 will be starting at position one and serving. And it's number 13, Xiao Meiling, who's middle blocking, starting at position five. That is who the head coach, Xu Huimin, has decided can get the job done. But Canada, Nicole Ban, has selected a team. She's rolled the dice. Going to find out whether her numbers are going to come up or not. The players are ready. I hope wherever you're watching from, whatever you're watching on, you're ready too. This one is about to get started. It's the People's Republic of China in red serving, Canada in black receiving for this women's sitting volleyball semi-final from the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. First points to Canada. Captain Ellis with the serve. <laughs> Instant side out, China now serving again. Well, that was interesting play because the ball's gone up onto the net. Instead of watching the ball all the way to the net, turn to watch the play on the other side, and then it's come right down 
uh, in front of Peters. That's a good hit. Yeah, Canada, I think, just need to settle down a little bit. They've had a miss serve, a couple of tight or even overpassed passes. A bit of confusion. No confusion at all about China's play. The captain, Xu Yixiao, making sure that one hit the floor. 4 1, what a start. Good start. Free ball for China. Not the best of sets. Canada able to take the point. Yeah, Canada looking really unsettled right now. They don't have great communication. Nobody really seems to know who needs to get the second ball. So there'll be the lifting call against Peters as he went to play that. She's saying, no, look, I didn't. Quite clearly, part of my torso was on the floor as she played it. Referee having none of it. There are some subtle differences between the standing game and the sitting game. For those of you who perhaps haven't seen sitting volleyball, we'll go through the rules as the match progresses. The, one of the uh, main ones is you've got to keep part of your torso on the floor at all times and playing the ball. You can block the serve. And if your feet touch the bottom of the net, that's not a net fault. But uh, if you touch the top of the net, that line, that will be a net fault. You'll get called for that. Peter's doing well to do some coverage here. But again, Canada's not really able to get the ball back over. That looks a little bit long in the arm. However, Canada will take it. Goes in with the point. Canada now with the serve. Oh dear. <laughs> she looked like she was going for an attack. She changed, changed her mind mid motion. She was definitely Ooh. trying to fool the opposition, ended up fooling herself. Good leave. Played. That's a good use of the block, getting the better of Xiao Mei Ling. Great push to the outside as well by Peters. Lovely set, setting her teammate up for success. Another good use of the block by Vos Shafiq. She's playing really smart right now. Excellent block. After that nervy start, Canada have got themselves right back in this set. Yeah, great close by the middle blocker. Making this Chinese team think twice. Lift called on the defensive player from China, Tang. You've got a little bit of flexibility with lifting in the back row as long as you're playing the ball below the plane of the net. But as you can see from that view, wasn't quite the case here. What a turnaround for Canada, leading at the first technical.
Canada have got themselves into a very good position very quickly in this set. They must make sure that they have as few unforced errors as possible from here on in and keep China working hard, make them earn all of their points. Great leave by Captain Xu. It's a good effort by the Canadian defence, but just need to get a little bit more control over that. Nice dig. Maybe too much on that swing from Zhang. The Chinese team are really playing like they're rattled right now. We're not used to seeing this from them, and no doubt they're not used to being in this position, especially over the last few days. Great effort by the Canadians to play their game. Still a bit scrappy from Canada. The one thing that China, they play a quick game, but they do seem to be, to be over revving a little bit, don't they, in this first set, which is unusual for them. Yeah, it is, and it's just causing them to make some unforced errors that are really uncharacteristic for them. But I think just give them a bit of time. They'll find the rhythm. A little bit of luck will also help. That's great net play by Oak. She's really disciplined, waiting for the ball to come over, but there's no one back there to help her out. A lifting call given against Caitlin Wright. It's the ref. She was wrong. A lifting call given against Tang Xumin. Everyone looks to the ref, to the, to all the front row players are looking at, who is it, what is it? Oh, it's me, right, okay. It just seems for some reason to be quite a delay in the decision-making process of the referees in sitting volleyball. Almost like they're expecting a drum roll or a fanfare before it's announced to build up the suspension, or the suspense, I should say. <laughs> suspension. suspense so far in this one this is brilliant from Canada they looked like they were gonna be out of this first set the way they started they've got themselves back in a couple of points behind now though they can get themselves a little bit more consistent they can really begin to put some more pressure on China great dig great finish wonderful put away from Daniel Ellis what a swing by Peters as well. Canadian offense has shown up today, which is really nice to see. Well left.
China's still just struggling to respond to the aggression that the Canadians are bringing, which is really interesting to see. Got to serve better than that. China pouncing. A great wall at the net for China. What a rally. That's going to be a carry, unfortunately. It was way, it was behind her head as she went to play that, Peters. And then she literally threw it down. It'd be great if she was above a basketball hoop, but absolutely fine. Canada knowing the proposition ahead of them coming into this semi-final, the daunting task that they may well have thought lay ahead. They are doing really, really well and not showing any signs of perhaps what they might be thinking internally, but they're putting the game as best they can to China. That's a great serve from Tang Shumai. But if, there's this, if there is a belief about Canada and what they can do, they could well make it very, very interesting and very difficult for China. They've got, though, to make sure that they settle down, get back into their groove. They don't want to let China run away with it. Nicole Ban just talking about getting that side out, what they need to do, and, and nice and high. And even though this game is played at 167.6 miles an hour, uh, approximately, it, it, there is, you know, you do want to create that time, and, and you create time with height on the pass in order to give everyone the opportunity to get into position, then to have a swing and do what they need to do. And so at times, that's a good way to slow things down and get yourselves back into it. Yeah, and it's about creating rhythm for your own side. You don't want to be passing the ball too fast, catching your setters off guard. You want them to get a good, nice touch on the ball and give your offense a chance. And Canada's offense is what they really need to utilize right now. They have huge hitters. We haven't seen a lot of that yet. That Oaks. works from Oaks. Yeah, doing really well to keep that ball in play. Hayden Vea coming in. On for some serving duty. Unfortunately, not what you want right now. Is Canada trailing by five now against a really strong Chinese side. The thing with China is you give them an inch and they will take a mile. Good leave. 
China knew it was going wide. Another unforced error from Canada, and that's been their undoing after getting into a good start. Voschavik not able to keep the ball in play. She's supposed to be showing no mercy. It's not quite happening. Great spot by Ellis here. She hit around the block, right in the line. Get up. Just can't keep it in play. Those are the little things that aren't quite going right for Canada at the moment. And those decisions, that was just a bad decision from Oaks, really. And those tend to come from lack of confidence, bit of jitters, overplaying, really. like it was in, but it's been given out. Didn't touch the block. Chinese defenders did really well to leave that. Canada call the timeout. Gift for Canada, miss serve from China. Canada will no doubt be going back to the service line, looking for some aggressive serves, maybe an ace or two if they're lucky. But they've got to close this point gap that that's China's built up. China called for a lift, so it's a point to Canada. That will work. Yeah, great blocking by Jang. Really good reach. That's not caught any hands. It's not found the court. And now it's set point for China. A lifting call on the far side, away from the first referee. Right under the nose of the second referee who didn't see it, but I guess the angles can be deceiving, and depending on what the first ref's looking at. Not usually looking for lifting calls, the first ref, but it's gone against China. They've uh, saved set point Canada. Can they do it again? The answer is no. Great block. 
from China. They take the set 25-18. They lead Canada by one set to nothing. A definitive win for China over Canada in the first set, 25-18. Canada, go Canada, go Canada going to be looking to come back strong. It's not too big of a difference in the numbers here. Canada actually have more kills, more attempts to swing. But I think what we're not seeing here is, is a story of errors, really. A lot of unforced errors from the Canadian side and the, and the Chinese, they're too consistent too disciplined, anything can happen. The sooner you can bounce back from those kind of things, the better. When you look at the psychology of, of the sport and, and unforced errors and then timeouts and so, so things that kind of go around them, it'd be interesting to see how Canada deal with that coming into this next one. Second set underway, Canada with the serve. They're trailing by one set to nothing against the People's Republic of China in this women's semi-final match. And first point goes the way of China with that uh, loose serve from Oaks. Peter struggling to get behind that ball, keep it inbounds. Looks like the set went a little bit long. Again, Canada just coming out a little bit unsettled, so they're just going to need to find their groove, speak to each other, just play their game. And that error is not going to help. Wonderful serve. That's a tough serve, isn't it? It's a good serve. Peters couldn't control it. Tang doing well to get a touch on that, but what a line shot by Peter. She's a really powerful hitter. Ellis setting her up nicely with ball all the way out to the line. That's the kind of play that's gotten Canada into the semifinal.
Zhao, no doubt, going for high hands. It looks like she didn't quite hit the target. I'd have been tempted. Maybe to call that set. Looked a little bit spinny. Bit Not that that's a, a technical term, <laughs> double touch. Good up. That one did catch hands of right as it went out. China will take the point. Great swing by Xu on that overpass. Oh, what a good serve. Liu Xi's such an experienced player. Ball called out as it hits the antenna on the far side of the net. Those what look like barber's poles, they uh, signify the airspace in which you can play the game. They're not actually an extension of the sideline because if the ball hits the sideline, it's in. Ball hits the antenna, it's out. And it's whoever it comes off last, the other team will get the point. The ball has to travel inside the antenna. If it travels outside it and lands out, it's out. If it goes over the top of the antenna, it's also out. Once again, Canada found themselves with another service error. Not only critical because it gives China a point, but it takes away a chance for Canada to have any sort of offense, throw China off their game. China are able to respond just like that. Wonderful swing by Wong in the hole of the block. That would be a carry. Once again, Canada's offense working well for them. Nice quick set. Oh, great play. Great effort by Oaks as well. Well, that's... So she's been called for a lift as she's went to play that ball, which is below the plane of the net. Oh, there's some queried looks here in the commentary position, that's for sure, as I'm sure there might well be for Canada, but fair play to them. They're just playing to the whistle. First technical timeout, China with the lead. Another strong start from the People's Republic of China. Bring to everyone while they're the reigning silver medalists and one of the most successful women's teams in sitting volleyball. They have three gold medals to their name and the one silver. They're the only team to have been in every single final of the sitting volleyball at the Paralympic Games since the women's game was introduced in 2004. So they have a lot to prove here and a lot to defend. What a swing by Oaks. This is exactly what Canada need to be doing every single time. That's a, such a good turn away from where the block was as well. It's really frustrating because you want Canada to succeed at this. They're playing really well in transition, but they cannot get a serve over. 
Well, that's the difference, isn't it, between success and failure, between the, the good teams and the great. The ability to make sure certain things happen, to keep hold of rhythm, to be able to be consistent in what you're doing. And that's something that China do. And that's why they're leading 10-5. It's why they're leading by one set to nothing. That's why they're a world-class sitting volleyball team. Great close by the Canadian blockers. They're still fighting hard. That's really good play on the last couple of points by Wright. Showing real aggression. She's showing real vision of the net and she knows where the Chinese blockers are. This is what Canada need right now, the right stuff, if they're going to get back into this and really try and close the gap. Nice one. The dig. But it's another chance for China. Oh, what a swing from Tang. She is so good and so powerful. Using that hole in the block, putting some real speed on it. Great get by China and a lovely finish by Xu. What a swing. Great chase by Wang Yang Yang. Five-point lead now for China. And they get themselves a free ball. It could be six. It is six. Great swing through the middle. Xiao Meiling. Masterclass. The Chinese are just so good. They're a well-oiled machine. That'll be an ace serve. China have served so well in this match. That's been the big difference, I think, in this game so far. You saw the statistics a moment ago. The attacking's been pretty even. The points going to each team pretty even, but the serving is a big difference.
Zhao Meilin, great play at the net. She's really strong. But then when you look at that in the slow-mo, Canada were penalised for a similar thing where the ball was up and then it was pushed onto the net. China seemingly to get away with it, but that's too late now for Canada. China up 16-8 in this second set. They're looking good to be two sets to nothing up. Decision took a while. China called for a lift. Peter's going in for that big swing, but it went wide. Great up by Oaks, giving her team a chance there. Oh, unfortunate error for China's Liu. She was just not over the net and just brought the ball right down with her. Another lift call for China. Canada doing well at the net. They're being really strong, really disciplined now. Looked like Peters just lost sight of where the ball was there. Not quite sure where it was. So she struggled to kind of recover and get the ball in the right place. But that's an easy point for China. What a swing from Kozan. They're still fighting, they're still battling. They're still in with a chance, it's not over yet. Oh, great coverage by Wong of her own block. And that wasn't a freeze frame. That was the ball being held. And so we have uh, a replay. Do over, depending where you come from. Well, this time it's Canada called for a lift. As always, the player reacts as if they have no idea what's going on. Not me, I couldn't possibly lift. 
I don't think you were ever called for it once, were you? Never. Or, yes, or a carry, never a double. Not justifiably, anyway. <laughs> Great swing again from the Canadian side. Nice quick ball moving around the block. Makes it really difficult for the defenders. Good communication. Trying hard to make something happen. And that time, though, Peter's trying a little too hard. Great recovery from China there. It's nearly a service error, but their defense was able to recover that. China four away from wrapping up this set. That's going to be a point for Canada. The referee says two touches. It's probably four. Two hands each player. Yeah, just a bit of a communication error. Zhao comes in to set it to the left side. Xu comes in to set it to the right side. Just crash in the middle. Tang did really well to keep that ball in play. Set was a little bit too low, but she moved so quickly, was able to get underneath of it and push it up over the block. Really good effort on her part. That's an easy leave. Substitution. Double substitution. Sky pan in, right in. I need to try and change Canada's fortunes here if they can. as the ball was played. That going against Liu Hongjin. Great serve from Scarepan. Really nice speed on the ball, top spin serve. That's the kind of serving Canada need for the rest of this match. <laughs> Masterful play by China's Chang. Lovely touch on the ball and it bounces off of the blocker from Canada into the antenna. Great kill by Ellis, moving that ball around the block. Finding that hole on the right side of the court. It's an 
Another one that's going to go Canada's way. China have kind of spluttering their way towards this second set at the moment. Well, that's a net touch against Canada. Should be China's ball. American team leaving the stadium. They'll be there scouting the competition for the gold medal match. Yes, yeah, so we're looking to see exactly what their opposition will be doing. Who knows? It's just one of those ones with the final four here at the uh, Makahari Messe Hall. Everyone taking an interest in everybody else. Set point then for China. Five set points to play with. Tang Xumie with the serve. That's the Heidi Peters that we've been seeing this entire tournament except for today. She's such a big hitter for Canada, and they just haven't been able to get an offense set up around her, so they haven't been able to score the points. China have done well, haven't they, to try and isolate her from proceedings with their serving. And no doubt that will have been a part of their game plan coming in. Right, trying to turn that ball off the Chinese block, but she wasn't really in the right position to do that. Didn't have the strength. Chinese block pushed it right down. And that means the set's gone the way of China. They've taken it 25-20. They lead by two sets to nothing. Looking at the stats, you can see definitely service faults were an issue for Canada. That was something that gave them some trouble early on in the set. Attacking's pretty even. Attacking's pretty even, but again, it's just errors. That's all this is down to, and I think the Canadians just need to find a way to settle in, find their rhythm, good passes up to their setter, and, and set up their big offense. They haven't been able to utilize that quite yet, and China just always consistent, always steady. They know what their job is and they execute it very, very well.
That's not landed in, not quite the start that Canada were looking for in set three. Oh, that was a good leave by the Canadian Libro. I think it might well have just tagged the line. Oh, no, it's been given us out. It, you're absolutely right. Never doubted you. It was, <laughs> it was a very good leave. This is where Canada now, they, it's a must-win set for them, but in the same time, they mustn't think that this is it. It's all or nothing. Now, they've got to go through those processes and really let the outcomes try and take care of themselves. That will help. Lifting call against China. And Canada up 2-1. Yeah, at this point for Canada, it's a matter of going out on court, starting completely fresh, completely forgetting about the last two sets. There's nothing they need to remember from that and need to come out like their original game plan was. But that was an excellent second ball by Leah. She's so fast. She's a great setter, and the Canadian block not at all ready for that. Right, trying to get her hands up at the last second, but the defense just sitting back, waiting to see what the set, where the set goes. Looked like a lot of ball watching as opposed to player watching because she had one hand down, one hand up. There wasn't anything else she could do. No, and that's about reading. That's a reading error on the defense's part. And especially in sitting volleyball, you have to remember these players are moving with their hands and they have to play with their hands. So your reaction time has to be that much sharper. This time the point goes in Canada's favor as the ball goes out. China are staying aggressive. This is what they need to do. They're trying to play a fast game, catch the Canadians off guard, and so far it's working for them. They just need to keep going. Xu showing us exactly why she's one of the top hitters on the Chinese team and one of the top hitters in this tournament. So much power. She knows exactly where she's putting the ball. The touch. Really good rally by both sides. Amazing defense by the Canadians. That Libro just flying to the outside, bringing that ball back in off the block. That is not easy to do. Really patient blocking there by the Canadians, forcing the Chinese player. She a little bit too excited coming into the net. Xiao Mei Ling, it was who uh, didn't manage to keep that ball alive. Seen it a few times now where the ball is going up onto the net over a player, and they've taken their eye off the ball just to look across the net at the opposition instead of tracking the ball the whole way. This is what Canada need. That's definitely lifting, but that was a really good chase. However, some things just don't tend to go your way. China is who took that point. Exasperating. What a play. Could that be a turning point, maybe? Because that touch, it was a touch just to get it off the floor, and it popped up brilliantly for Canada to have a swing, and they take the point to get level. It's a real emotion shift for Canada. They've been really kind of placid, playing a bit scared. And look at them now. They're so much more relaxed. They're in their game. This is, this is exactly where they need to be. But again, with the service faults. Well, for Julie Cousin, she can serve like that. It's fine. She just, just needs to go back a bit further and hit the same serve. I just got to get in a lot further. But she's taking the block out completely with that height she's putting on it. Yeah, she just needs to find a way to get the ball to drop behind the block. Now 
call against Jang on that set. Pancake picked up. Canada pressing. China responding. Chinese are just so good at defense. They're so quick and they're really good at rallying from mistakes. But what a swing from Vos Shafiq. That's going to give them a really good boost. It was an excellent rally. And Vos Shafiq showing no mercy. But that's the level at which Canada are going to have to play. They're going to have to play that tempo, that play to try and stay with Canada, with uh, China here. The blocking. That's where you've got to keep your concentration from the serving line. Wong getting so fired up there. Excellent serve. We'll go to the technical timeout. China have managed to engineer a two point lead. Oh, great effort. Wright did really well. That was a really quick set. She got her arms up just in time swinging. It went into the block, but the Chinese weren't ready. Zhang Lijun with the serve, and that will be an ace serve. That's always the way, isn't it? Blockers just reaching outside their body line. It's the same. It's the same in standing when it's a, a players attacking the ball. It's the same here in serving. You've got to stay in that body line. going to be lifting against Canada. Yeah, passing a little bit too tight into the net is another issue that they've been having. And what that does is it's forcing errors from, from the player trying to take the second ball as they're desperately trying to save it out of the net. It's just a few adjustments Canada need to make. And they've got a winning team as long as they can keep those errors to a minimum. But with a team like China, you just, you can't have those errors or they'll eat you for breakfast, quite honestly. well played really well played by Peter she wasn't in the best position either and she was able to get that ball 
Tang Shima over it. thought it was going to be coming over. She didn't really put the block up either, did she? Thought it was perhaps going to go past or over her side. It's a good use. A good effort by Oaks there, really reaching forward. Referee signalling that, that it was inside the two-metre line, so regardless, he's, she's just saying, no, it's lifting call. With that signal that she made after the lifting, being very strict on that. Once again, Canadian offense, when it comes out aggressive, they come out strong. The Chinese haven't been able to respond to that. The China aren't really committing to the block, are they? They're waiting to see what's happening. And if they're going to do that, then there's chances because you can get the swing away before the block can get finished. Sky Pan with the serve. Oh, what, what, a, what a serve that was. Second one didn't go in. First one was an ace, cancelled them out. There she goes back off court now. Peters was trying to make out as if she was going to set that. Left it a little bit late to go over. Wong did really well to read that. She was nice and patient with her hands, but yeah, Peters just didn't have good sight. Great push, this time by Kozen. Turning the ball around that block, finding that empty spot on the outside of the two meter line. You have got oh. to be joking. Amazing, amazing recovery by the Chinese players there. Don't really know how that happened. It was a little bit like the Matrix. Canada won't be seeing anything funny in that particularly, although there is still a wry smile from Peters. That was exquisite from China. And it summed up the way they played in this match and what Canada have got to do just to stay with them. Fabulous swing from Xiao Meiling. Go to the second technical timeout. China leading by five, leading by two sets to nothing. They are getting closer and closer and closer to a place in the final. China coming out strong after the second technical timeout. The 
as Captain Shu goes back to serve. Gets the ace. That You have those conflict areas between the passing unit or that. And that's where you're looking to go into those three, the two spaces, and then the two spaces either side of the wing passes. Brilliant serving. Conflict areas as they're technically known or otherwise more favorably known as the corridors of uncertainty or the panic channel, or even sometimes the Isle of Mystery, because when you go shopping there, you can sometimes come up with an ace. Oh, really great coverage by Canada there. They were so fast in the right spot to be covering the blocks. One thing as well, though, just watch the handling of China, the, the way that they're, they're setting the ball, the skill levels of all the players is, is exquisite. They are, and all of these players are hugely talented. They can all play every position if they have to. China playing a slightly different style of volleyball system to what Canada's doing. Canada's doing something more similar to a standing system where they have dedicated setters, but the way the Chinese are playing, anybody can set, anybody can hit, and that offers them great flexibility. Flipper works. up again but such effort that's going to go against China it has to because the referee had called Canada for the same play previously in the set so at least there is consistency but those are the ones aren't you when you're making such a play like that it, to the extreme like you already want the rally to continue Brilliant. That did look to have stopped for a moment, but I guess the referee, on the count of how long it has to be held for, didn't quite get there. 1,001, not quite 1,002, will play on. Yeah, that was really, really good play. Wang was really patient. She knew exactly what she was doing, just playing her game, being really technically correct. Just another demonstration from China. They're such a strong team. They're so fast. They're so versatile. The strong, fast versatility of China opening up a seven-point lead. Canada still giving it their all and playing a huge part in this spectacle. Great dig, but it won't stay in play. Couldn't quite get the angle to send it up high enough for someone else to get onto it. 21-13, China getting closer to victory. Side out achieved. leave <laughs> 
touch. The block out from Ellis. Great pass, allowing Canada to get into system, get Ellis on the outside. And on the other side of the net, Chinese block, just not quite where it needed to be yet. Great touch. Oh, what a turn. Zhang did so well, she was completely out of position there. That was excellent. The way that she was able to turn that from where she was on that on the body position was really, really cool. Yeah, she's got a great touch on the ball. She has really good control. All of all of these women do really. And that comes from experience and that comes from a lot of playing. Gong Bing coming on to serve. China two away from guaranteeing one of those. Will it be silver? Will it be gold? Will they be getting there? Can Canada stick with it? The trouble is now, though, it is match point for China. Nine match points to play with. Gong serves again. Free ball. Swing chance for the match. Another go. And they've done it. Brilliant swing. Tang Shumei puts the ball away. China take the set, 25-15. They've beaten Canada in straight sets. It's China all going through to the final. For the fifth time, five out of five. Huge, accomplish huge accomplishment for this program, but also huge accomplishment for the Canadian side. It's important to remember this is, they're guaranteed the best finish they've ever had at a Paralympic Games. They've come out to this tournament really, really strong, really eager to prove themselves, and they've done that.